This is a great free baby quilt pattern. It's great for fat quarters and makes a wonderful gift. I've made two of these quilts, so you will see in this tutorial that I show the cutting in the yellow, but the rest of the making is in the blue. There is a handy printout of the design in the description below to follow if you sew your own too. For this quilt, you will need eight different shades of your main color in fat quarters and half a meter of white. You will also need half a meter for your binding, one meter of backing fabric, one meter of wadding or batting. I used a bamboo batting for my quilts and some thread to match. First, we need to cut squares. You will need 38 colored squares. Each square needs to be 5.5 inches wide or 14 centimeters. I cut four of each of the eight colors and then an extra six from the different shades. Then you will also need 10 white squares too with the same measurements. Once they are all cut, take a ruler and cut across the diagonal of each square to make triangles, including the white. Match each triangle with another triangle, right sides together, trying to make the shade selection even across the fabrics. You will need six completely white sets and eight half white, half colour too. The printout will help with this process. Once you have pinned all the triangles together, sew with a quarter inch seam and press the seams open on all the squares. I didn't film this, but also trim each square so that they are an even five inches before the next step. When all your squares are ready, grab the Studio 77 printout and lay out all the squares so that the shades are evenly spaced and you are happy with the layout. I highly recommend you take a photo of your layout at this stage too. and strategically layer your squares so that they stay in the same order and sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. As you're sewing, try and match up the seams as you sew. I find that pinning really well helps with this, as does a walking foot on your machine. Once you have your design in strips, press open the seams and then pin and stitch the strips together to make the whole quilt top. Once it's all stitched, press open the seams so that you have it all laying nice and flat. Next is the actual quilting. Lay your base or quilt back on the table, your batting over it, and then your quilt top finally on the top. Cut the bottom two layers to match the quilt top. Pin all the layers together and put clips all around the edges so that the layers are nice and secure. You could also use fabric spray at this stage too, which I highly recommend, but unfortunately I didn't have any to hand for this project. I decided to freehand embroider my quilt, but if you're not feeling confident with that, then a simple grid of stitches would also look amazing with this design. If you're wanting to have a go at the embroidery, I used a template that is actually meant for using directly with the machine. However, I prefer not using them like this and instead trace onto the quilt before machining as you can see here. You can see me using a friction pen, but I actually found it hard to get rid of the marks, so I recommend you use a chalk pen, which I switched to shortly after this. You can find all my favourite tools, including my favourite chalk pen, in the description below. Using a darning foot, move the fabric under the machine to follow your drawn lines and quilt the fabric. I also recommend these quilting gloves as they really help you to grip the fabric. Once it's quilted, lay it out and trim the edges so that they are all very straight and even. And now onto the binding. Cut four strips by the width of the fabric, each strip being two and a quarter inches or 5.5 centimeters. Sew the strips together on an angle. To do this, place the strips at right angles to each other, pin and mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. When prepping this for sewing, be sure to sew the strips together the same way without the fabric twisting or your seams won't all go in the same direction. Once sewn, cut off the excess along each seam so there is quarter inch seam allowance left. Fold the strip in half lengthways and press, making sure that the seams are pressed open as you go.
open the strip out and fold each edge into the centre crease. Fold again and press all the way along the strip. Lay the quilt out face down and lay the binding in place roughly so that you can make sure the seams of the binding don't fall on a corner. Place the raw edge of the binding along the edge of the quilt and open up the binding. Place a clip at the start of the binding whilst leaving an excess of at least 6 inches before the start. Then clip all the way around the quilt to keep the edges together before stitching. I just clip the quilt edge together but you could also clip the binding before sewing if you don't feel as confident. Stitch it on by stitching in the crease of the binding. Stop just before you get to the end of the first edge a few inches before the corner. Stop with your needle down a few inches from the edge. Using a ruler, make a mark half inch from the edge and stitch up to that mark. Reverse a few stitches to secure, then completely remove the quilt from the needle. Fold the binding at a 45 degree angle to the right and then back on top of itself to the left so that it lies along the next raw edge of the quilt. Pin in place and then feel for the fold underneath making a crease with your nail. Then make a mark where this crease meets the next crease or stitch line of the binding. Place it back under the needle and sew the next edge of the quilt as you did before, stopping at the next corner like before and repeating the corner process for all four corners. After the final corner, stop about six inches from the beginning of the binding and remove from the machine. Place a pin where you would like the binding to join together. Put the two ends of binding right sides together so that they meet at that first pin and place another pin where they meet. And then make a mark where they join on both pieces. Take the two pieces off the quilt and twist the binding so that they are at right angles like when you join the binding together before. Make sure that the marks you made just now are on the edges of the pieces of binding. And place a pin in to keep them together. Being sure to make the angle the same direction as the other seams on the binding, mark a diagonal line from corner to corner just like you did before. Take the binding off the quilt and stitch this line. Cut a quarter inch seam allowance next to this stitch line, again like we did before on the binding. Finger press the seam open before stitching the binding completely to the quilt. This next bit can be hand sewn for an invisible stitch line or stitch in the ditch from the back or front. I personally like the stitch from the front. Flip the quilt over and working from the front, pull the binding around from the back edge to the front so that the folded edge is slightly past the folded edge on the back. You can either stitch as you go with this or clip in place all around the quilt and then stitch. When it comes to the corners, fold the fabric so that on the back the fold is pointing to the left and on the front the fold is pointing to the right. This helps it lay more flat and is less bulky in the seam. Continue sewing the binding all the way around the quilt. To 
Add the nameplate, I cut some heat transfer vinyl on my Cricut maker, but you could also machine embroider or hand embroider the nameplate too. I love how these quilts have turned out and I hope you love the quilts that you make too. If you use this tutorial, please remember to tag me as I love seeing what you've made. You can find me on Instagram under at studio7t7. While you're there, why not say hi with the hashtag, hashtag hi from YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Coming up on the screen right now are some more sewing tutorials that I think you're going to love. I'll see you on the next video.